Hey everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I paint up this Sentry Pylon, a cool Forge World, technically model. It is a weapon from the Necron faction of uh, Warhammer 40k. So I started off with priming the entire model black, and I didn't like the, the finish. I wanted it more, um, as I didn't want to finish it with just a primer. So then I hit it with Abaddon Black from the uh, Citadel Air Paints with my Sotar 2020. That way I just got nice coverage over it, and uh, that way it just it, it had a more satin finish to it, I guess. But uh, I just like the finish of it uh, with the Abaddon Black as opposed to finishing with just a primer. And then once it was black, I painted all the metallic areas, so all the little circles on the legs, uh, the gun, all that with lead belcher, of course, the darkest silver from the Citadel range. And uh, yeah, as you see, it's great because it goes over black with, with relative ease. It has the best shine, obviously, when it goes over black, so it's the best way to combine these. So I took my time and painted the gun, the coil metal parts of the gun. And uh, yeah, there's not a lot of, it's gonna be mostly the models black and green, obviously. It's not gonna be a lot of colors in this one, but it's one of those what, those models that you just do each color really well, and it'll just look just as nice than if you use a lot of colors, right? There's no need to use a lot of colors if you don't want to. And with Necrons, it's a faction that less is more in a lot of ways with Necrons, I find. Um, the more simpler color schemes tend to be, tend to be more effective. So once the silver was done, I then hit all these areas with non oil. That way it just gets in the recesses, gives a little bit of definition. But of course it has a very matte finish to it, so we'll have to uh, do an overbrush or dry brush later to bring back up the shine of the silver areas. And then I just hit yep, the, the, all the gun with the uh, non-oil. This model is just for painting for a friend, and he just wanted a very simple color scheme. Um, he's going to use it more for terrain purposes. so. I just honored his wish. As you see, I got a good coat of non oil all over the gun. And when that was dry, I then did a quick overbrush slash dry brush of these areas with Iron Breaker, the mid tone silver from the Citadel range. I was happy with uh, the look after the Iron Breaker, I was debating originally whether or not I should just do a very light dry brush with Green Fang Steel afterwards, but I was happy with the Iron Breaker, so I skipped, uh, so I kept it finished up to this, area, this step. I just wanted to rebuild back up a bit of the shine, the recesses, the darker tones, and just give some variation in the tones on the, on the gun, because as you see with the gun, I'm just doing a very light dry brush uh, with, iron, with Iron Breaker. Because I'm doing a very light dry brush, I have to frequently reload my brush because uh, I'm not trying. To, I'm trying to use as minimal pigments on my brush as possible. And time to start on the green. So first, I did an edge, high, uh, just a quick edge highlight with Warpstone Glow. And now I thinned it down with some Lamy Medium. I wanted all these paints nice and thin. I didn't want them to go on too thick. So I did an edge highlight over all the straight edges. And I'll later go over all the areas that I want to create a glowing effect with my Sotar 2020 as well. But I wanted to do the, because it's an OSL, I wanted to do everything else first and then lead to the OSL, right? Makes sense. So just take my time, slowly dragging my brush across the straight edges of the legs, and then I repeat this process on the top part. I like to keep things separate for this tutorial because it was much easier to handle. As you can see, I had much more access to the bottom and as well as the areas around the um, around the top part as well by separating them out. As you can see here, just once again, a quick edge highlight over these edges. They will it will dry slightly darker as you can see because of the thinness of the paint and the fact that I use lamium medium to thin it down. But. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to create an, as uh, with my Necrons, I like to do always just a nice edge highlight over these, over the, uh, the very sharp edges that it has, because it really, it draws your attention to them. And then I repeat this process with a one-to-one -one mix of Mood Green and Warpstone Glow, but I focus more on the central area. I like, I did the central parts of each area. As you see, like I, I left the the areas towards the, the outer parts darker, and I'm focusing more on the central part of each uh, 
surface with the pour stone below and the green. And I just repeat this on the top part as well. Building up kind of like a, a natural glow around the, around the, the sentry pylon. This took a little bit of time because it's such a large model, but I also used it to highlight up the wiring and the buttons around the, uh, around the guns as well. And then one more with just mood green by itself. Once again, on the various like, surfaces facing upwards, and I just want to bring a, a bit of a brighter tone to a couple areas. And then the top part as well. Went a little too thick on a couple areas, which I just cleaned up later with some uh, Avanon black. This is just building the quick gradient color as well for the buttons and the orbs on the gun. Brighter towards the top. And that's about it for the, uh, the edge highlighting. So next it was time to turn to gold. So I used rich gold from the late, the liquid gold range from Vallejo. Uh, it's an alcohol based gold, so I cut it with some 99% isopropanol. And I put the entire inside of the sentry pylon, as well as the small gaps along the perimeter, you know what I'm talking about, and as well as the, the little symbols along it. I did all these with rich gold. The reason why I went with rich gold was I really wanted a bright, vibrant gold on the inside to contrast the black and the really cold, you know, silvers. So uh, I just wanted to do those that way. Uh, just a bit of contrast, it really makes these areas really pop and stand out. Then it's time to do the glowing effect. So I just took my Sotar 2020 and carefully just did a, a bit of a glow effect around any of the vents. Uh, the orb at the bottom of the gun, or at the bottom of the sentry, and just around the gun, the wiring. I start off with warp stone glow, and as you see, I'm just carefully creating, uh, just going around the vents, and a little bit around each area, and then repeating this on the top part of the sentry. Just creates a bit of an OSL and, and a bit of glow to these areas, and I'll repeat this with lighter greens as well. There's the top, the bottom half orb part. And then I did this around the gun as well. Uh, I wanted to create a bit of an OSL as well around the, the, the top and the bottom part of the gold. Anywhere that the the light from the, the sentry gun would be kind of shining onto. So I did a little bit of OSL around the very, you know, the very front and the very top front of the, uh, of the sentry pylon as well. And then I repeat this process with a 1-1 one -one mix of Warpstone Glow and Mood Green. Focusing more central with each area, like uh, this part, as you can see, I'm focusing more on the top. These, the vents, I'm focusing more on the central parts of the vents. This is a good way to just create a good, quick OSL. And then I'm focusing on the gun, uh, the center parts of the wiring, and the center parts of the coils. And then finally, this, uh, I just did one more with mood green. As you can see, not a very complicated color palette, but it, it works. It's Necrons, right? That's the thing about Necron. As I said, less is kind of more with them. You can do as much as you want, but I find that the more simpler color schemes tend to be more efficient and effective. So as you see, just hitting the very center parts of each part with mood green. Very top of the orb, very center parts of the uh, vents. And the center part of the gun, the coils of the gun. And that's it. So now I know how to paint up this sentry pylon. It was a lot of fun to paint up. Very quick job, but it was effective. I love the minimal color scheme. 
but uh, my friend's gonna really like it. It's gonna go, go kick butt on the, on the battlefield and look really good doing it. You see, I really like the way that the, you see a little bit of the OSL on the front of the pylon as well, and the goals really break up the monotony of the black areas. And that's it. So as always, thank you so much for watching this painting tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it. Learn a bit about painting a Necron Pylon. Stay tuned for more painting tutorials. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. And until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.